Uh, some of the red uh, dots around my base are watchtowers. The Saiyan AI is demonstrating a uh, strange feudal strategy known as crushing, which is tower rushing, where you build forward towers into your uh, opponent's base. So, uh, okay, well, we've hit the time limit, so uh, I hope you guys have all watched part one of this video. Uh, the part one will be in a link below or in the video description, so make sure you watch part one if you haven't watched it already. Uh, okay, so you'll see that uh, I'm responding to an enemy attack by building watchtowers. Watchtowers work best if uh, your town center is able to shoot enemy units at the base of them, because uh, don't forget about the minimum range. Uh, I know things look bad, but you can really see uh, how much it helps that I've created sort of choke points with my buildings, like this, by building them in a strategic manner. And believe it or not, scouts are not uh, can be used as more than scouts. They are actually uh, they can actually be really effective field units. Uh, so. It's kind of like a game of rock, paper, scissors at this point, where, uh, you know, skirmishers beat archers, scouts beat archers, uh, archers beat spearmen, spearmen beat scouts, men-at-arms beat spearmen. Men-at-arms are really generally not a good feudal unit, just because they're slow. They're extremely powerful, but they're slow. So unless your save has a particular bonus with them, I would recommend just sticking to the, you know, the uh, units that don't cost gold because you can create a lot more units if you're not focusing on gold. So you see, I've got a lot of farms. You don't necessarily have to build this many farms, but, you know, you should always be working with that town center. So, I'm making units of all of these, uh, and I'm just, you know, keeping on that lumber camp. So, trushing is a strategy where you build forward watchtowers. Uh, a lot of uh, effective rushes involve building forward buildings. Which is when you build buildings uh, close to your uh, opponent's base. So that's always an effective strategy to do, even like late game. You know, build barracks is next to your enemy base. You'll see that the normal computer will do that, uh, and it's just really, really effective. So if you want to get better at this game, uh, you should definitely try playing at least uh, against the computer on moderate, because. If you can't beat the computer on moderate, then you know you got something to do. Because the computer on standard is really, really, really stupid. And the computer on easy as well, come on, you know. It's just it's sad. So you should try playing against the computer at least on moderate, you know, with teammates or anything. Because then you'll get a more realistic feel for uh, how games will actually be. Uh, fun fact is it's actually impossible to lose against the computer on standard and easiest. You just have to quit. Uh, they'll never attack your villagers. So scouts are effective because they're fast. And <clears throat> that means that you can run into your enemy base and just keep harassing their uh, lumberjacks. And you know, if someone's harassing your lumberjacks, don't be afraid to take your villagers and you know fight back, because your villagers have a nasty punch early on. Uh, they're bulky, that's the thing, so... Your punches do hurt. But you just gotta make sure that you, uh, you're keeping up with your wood. And, if, uh, you know, if need be, remember, you can uh, take all those lumberjacks and move to another clump of trees. So, now I'm still making stuff. By this point, I probably should have advanced to the castle age. Uh, I was really, really, really into the combat, so I, I wasn't really noticing. And yeah, you can see that I'm losing a lot of troops, but, you know, on the flip side, he's not getting any wood. So, I know I can starve him economically. Uh, if you ever decide to trash, it's a weird kind of strategy. But, you know, obviously you'll want to go for stone in the Dark Age, and I might do a video on that. Uh, you want to go for stone in the Dark Age, and then you want to put uh, towers next to key resources, such as gold and wood. It's a very effective strategy, you know. Uh, you can see that I'm going to go take out his tower so I can mine some gold by using villagers. And villagers are extremely buff. Uh, especially for the Spanish late game, but, you know, the early on, villagers are really buff, so don't don't forget to uh, fight back with them, because, you know, they can be an effective fighting force, but make sure that you're still gathering resources for them. Oh, jeez. My computer's lagging a little bit, so I can't quite tell what's going on. Okay, so, you know, just uh, kill units, kill units, kill units. Uh, remember, when you're rushing, you're not trying to kill anyone. You're just trying to, just trying to mess with them. You know, you're trying to hurt him more than the Russian hurts you. So you can see I built a market, uh, you know, I tried to balance out my resources, bam, I'm advancing. 
Yeah, I realized that was uh, kind of slow. Normally, want to do that earlier. Stay in the fetal age too long, then uh, you're in trouble. So, if you're um, slow as hell, like I was in this video, you can expect that your opponent will have reached the castle age. And castle age warfare is way different than feudal age warfare. Uh, one of the scariest units on the planet uh, you now have access to, which is the knight. When you see the uh, like white text that pops up that says your enemy has advanced to the castle age, bam, spearman! Keep him next to your lumber camp. Uh, I can't stress how important it is that your lumber camp is safe and sound. Treat it as if it was your baby. You know, like the lumber camp is the greatest thing that's ever happened to you in your entire life, and losing it makes you a weenie. So don't lose it. So you know, just keep harassing his villagers. Keep harassing them. Uh, you know, if the feudal age combat starts to you know drag out, uh, don't forget you can still make archers too. And don't forget your blacksmith upgrades because uh, you know archers and skirmishers are really weak. Fletching is one of the most useful technologies you can. So don't neglect your research. Uh, every, every tech really counts. And sure, certain civs excel in some areas, so don't forget to abuse that. You know, obviously Mayans get cheaper archers, so you might want to consider investing in archers. Um. See, I can just see M. Fox guarding him. Kind of mystified me that clearly he was still getting wood, and uh, I don't know how. For a minute, I was uh, I was just really confused. If, no, this computer doesn't cheat. No, the normal computer doesn't cheat, even if you think it does. Unless it's on hardest, and it's clearly cheating. So now that I'm in the castle age. It is time to spam knights. That is the general uh, standard castle age uh, procedure: is to just spam knights. Uh, you can also be a civ like Aztecs or Mayans who doesn't have knights. Obviously, it's hard to create what you don't have. So, uh, in that case, you want to try evil warriors because they're they're sort of like knights, I guess. Uh, I guess I mean they're more like a super buff light cavalry, but they're they're good for raiding. And then again, again, the idea is in this is that you're not really trying to kill anybody. You're just trying to destroy all their villagers because. Instead of the feudal age, you're not trying to harass the villagers, this time you're trying to kill them. Another good uh, uh, castle age unit is crossbowmen, which are like archers except way better. And when you're dealing with enemy rams, uh, and you're playing all defensive, mangonel is really good, and you got battering rams, you have a lot of new options. So if you have no idea what to do in the castle age, the uh, general idea is just to spam knights. Keep in mind, they're really expensive, and unlike your spearmen and skirmishers, it actually really matters if you lose these guys. That's 60 food and 75 gold down the drain, and that stuff ain't coming back. If you're wondering why I'm the Saracens for this video, just because they don't really have any economic bonuses, so I just picked them because they're kind of generic, and they can pretty much do most standard rest strategies. So the thing that makes knights so threatening is that they are bulky, very, very bulky. They can survive town centers, uh, fire, you know, when they shoot all the arrows. So, um, yeah, when you're rushing, I didn't mention this earlier because I forgot, but the huge rule of thumb is to stay away from the enemy town center. Enemy town centers are devastating. Uh, they will just absolutely destroy your army before you can even think. So, the difference here is that knights can actually take some punishment. They've got, they're super duper bulky. And if the enemy sends knights at you, make spearmen. Spearmen cost almost nothing, but they are, re but they uh, can really do a number on knights. You have a lot of them. Obviously upgrade them to pikemen if you can't. Yeah, see this is where I felt like a total dumbass. Because I was like, oh, he had a second lover camp right there. I really didn't think the computer was smart enough for that, but, you know, I deserved it. So, you know, same thing goes here. Find the enemy lumber camp and destroy it. Uh, a general rule when you reach the castle age, and I didn't really demonstrate it much in this particular video because it wasn't mining stone, but when you reach the castle age, no matter what you're doing, and there's no excuse, build another town center. Build at least one more town center. I mean, I would recommend building, like, three extra, but at least build one extra, and for many reasons. Town centers, like I said earlier, are really, really devastating defensive buildings, and plus, they serve as drop-off points for resources, and on top of that, 
you can use them to create more villagers. Mm -hmm. And remember, this entire time, your town center should not be idle. If you ever see your town center being idle, slap yourself. You're a terrible, terrible person and nobody loves you. No, I'm kidding, of course, but yeah. Um, if your base is surrounded in towers like mine is, you know, battering rams always help. Knights can take out towers pretty effectively. Knights are just really devastating, but you gotta be really careful watching them because, uh, they're really expensive and you, you just gotta be careful with them, you know. It, it's always good to, you know, drag a box around your army. Um, and then, you know, assign them to a hotkey, you know, like a control 2 or something like that, because control 1's already your scout, uh, as I said in the first part. So by this point, it looks like it's pretty much over, and it is. So I just wanted to, uh, you know, say thanks for, you know, watching, and uh, I, hope, I hope all you guys, you know, rate, comment, and subscribe. Really appreciate it, and uh, thanks guys. So, yeah, he just reached the castle age, uh, just because I was kind of schooling him the whole game. Uh, to, to span knights, uh, you know, you want to go heavy on gold. Just a general rule with villager distribution is, look at your resources, what are you low on? More villagers need to be put on that. So you can see from my resources, well, I'm a little low on food and a little low on wood, so I should go focus more on that. The only reason I'm going so gold heavy is because knights cost more gold than you could possibly imagine. Uh, again, you know, uh, there's really no excuse to not have your town center, you know, working, so, you know, if need be, your market should be able to build, uh, I mean, should be able to trade resources, just so you can, uh, keep that villager production going. The idea, the ideal goal is to get, you know, about 100 villagers, if you're playing a tuner pop. I know that sounds overwhelming, and you don't necessarily need that many, but, believe it or not, it really does help. And remember, for every villager you lose, it should be replaced. Every villager is a special individual, and you should cherish that. And they're all valuable members of the community. You lose one, and you gotta replace them. Because, you know, uh, I, I know many, many good players who, you know, when they lose, like, all of their farmers or something because of some knights coming and just killing all of them, uh, they won't replace them. Don't be that guy. Nobody likes that guy. Alright, so this match is nearing a close, you know, just spamming knights, spamming knights, spamming knights. That's that's kind of the standard strategy for the uh, for the Castle Age. Obviously there is a lot more variety to it, but you know, uh, if you have no idea what you're doing, spamming knights is the way to go. Uh, so yeah, there's really not much to say left for this. Your town center should still be working. Research whatever you want. Uh, you know, obviously if you don't want to spam knights, you know, crossbowmen work really well, eagle warriors, uh, putting pikemen at uh, vulnerable locations around your town is always good. The upgrade from spearmen to pikemen is really, really important one if you can afford it. Yeah, so, like you can, like you can see, uh, knights can actually take town center fire. And don't neglect your blacksmith. Uh, you'll see a lot of really good players neglecting their blacksmith. It doesn't matter so much early on, but uh, once you get the Imperial Age, you know, you, you better have all your blacksmith upgrades, you're going to get just decimated. And they're not as important with knights, but you know, it always helps. The blacksmith contains some of the most important technologies in the game. But if you're, if you're making archers, or like ranged units, you, you gotta get Fletching and Bodkin Arrow. It, it's just, it, it's, it's extremely important. So again, I didn't demonstrate it much in this video, uh, but you want, you know, multiple town centers, start making villagers, uh, you know, and just just really, you know, build up your economy. And yeah, my knights are just, uh, schooling him right now. If you want to know how to play online, I already have a video on that. I might make a new one that's kind of updated, because, uh, the old one's a little, uh, outdated. But, uh, you know, I would personally recommend that you sign up on Googly, and make sure you say that I referred you if you did. Uh, same username as my YouTube username. Uh, obviously you have other options such as Game Ranger 2, it's just I personally prefer Boobly. So, you know, uh, yeah. You just, with the knights, you know, go for the villagers, go for the lumber camp. And if somebody's attacking you with knights, spearmen. Spearmen, spearmen, spearmen. Camels are also good, but, you know, they cost a lot. Alright guys, so here are the achievements. Remember to rate, comment, and subscribe for more videos. More videos are coming. Alright, so make sure to check my channel for updates. Thanks, guys. See ya.